My next guest is uh, one of the most talented actresses in the entertainment industry. She's best known as uh, Phyllis, but in her new film, High Anxiety with Mel Brooks, she, uh, she's got a character that somebody says rivals both Dolly Parton and Darth Vader. Uh, <laughs> would you welcome Miss Cloris Leachman? Fine, thank you. Thank you. It's nice having you here. Thank you, John. Thank you, Cloris. It's good to see you again. So, anyway. I saw you last night. We were talking about all the networks doing, you know, nostalgic things, uh, anniversaries. And last night, NBC had the um, first 50 years, a second look. And they had a lot of very famous people who at that particular time weren't weren't famous. Bob Redford was in one. Uh, they showed Mary Tyler Moore when she had like two lines oh. in a uh, in a western, and all of a sudden, up you come doing. I think Philco Playhouse. Did you see the show at all? No, last night? I didn't see it. And I think the year was about 1949. Do you remember the the play? Oh, I did many of those. Yeah, uh -huh. it was a love scene. Close up. I well, don't, I'm know, glad don't know who the actor about was. That. Hope oh, the next 50 years is going to be oh, I'll so I'll tell you what it was. We looked romantic. it up. Romantic. It was uh, entitled Nocturne. Nocturne? Well... Does that mean anything at all? Or do they just blend together? No, I, I told a story one night on your show about a one Philco Playhouse where the man forgot his lines and we were five minutes short. Yeah, those days it was all live. Yeah, uh -huh. And you just finished the show? What, it, uh... We just went home. We thought it was their problem. <laughs> Everybody got out early and went to eat, which is most actors tend to. I was watching some of the, the clips last night, and what was funny, they call it the golden age of television. Not all of it was that golden. It was experimental. <laughs> uh, but you saw a lot of shadows, and very often, if you remember back in those days, you would hear the stage noise. You would hear camera dollies pulling back. You'd have this very quiet scene in the house, and all of a sudden you'd hear... <laughs> <laughs> and you knew the camera was pulling back and they were pulling the cables on the floor and then all of a sudden a big microphone boom shadow would come right across somebody's face as they're saying I love you Margie and the whole thing would be... <laughs> so that was but those were fun days weren't they I don't think I mean I've already told all those stories here yeah. so I don't think I because I'm I'm you know have a whole a whole memory bag of all those days but but I did tell them. Them. I already told those stories. So yeah, I but mean, it wasn't all a terrible time, was it? I mean, oh, it was, was the most fun of the world. The best training. Uh, I didn't ever do summer stock. It was an incredible training because you really had to uh, think on your toes. And, and all uh, the actors and actresses and a lot of the best directors in, telev in, in motion pictures mm -hmm. now came out of those early years in television. I have no fear as a result of that. I mean, if you, if you can live through those days, I think you're, you're not really afraid of anything. Do you miss at all that, that what they call the ad adrenaline pumping because you know that it's not... Uh, it's not live this moment and uh, I never had that for some reason uh, that never frightened me really? any of that mm -mm. other things maybe but not that I can remember doing uh, uh, the few dramatic comedy things I did I did one uh, I did a Playhouse 90 once with uh, Edward Everett Horton and Frank McHugh was three men on a horse and it was live and there was a scene where it was a drunk scene and the next morning it was supposed to be Sunday morning very quietly but there was no commercial break and you ran as fast as you could backstage to get into the next scene. And now you're supposed to be very quiet. And the scene before that has been a very physical, yes, uh, rather violent entirely. scene. And now you're supposed to be calm and you're going, <sighs> you know, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, uh, it was murderous because there was no breaks at all. But I think the quality nowadays is probably better. Well, they, they burned all of the um, kinescopes that they used to have in those days, which is tragic. All the, the history that we had. They did not keep records of most of those shows, no. and um, which they should have, but don't get started on that. I know, I'm trying not to get started on some of this stuff because then we would sad. be talking about... I've only seen pieces oh, yes. of high anxiety so far. I understand it's a crazy... That's all I did was picture. pieces, so that's perfect. <laughs> how, do you, how, how is it working with Mel Brooks? Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. I mean, yeah. Uh, it's really his kind of salute to Alfred Hitchcock, is in it? Yes, is it, it is. Uh -huh, and... Uh, he just creates a climate where uh, you're all in it together, and, and uh, he's very open to... There's a hair in my face. I hope it's mine. It is mine. Anyway. <laughs> Isn't that bad luck to do that? Huh? Is it? 
<laughs> That's an old theatrical thing. Don't don't pull a hair out. I didn't know that. I I just made it up. I don't oh, know if there's anything like that at all. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to see. This film clip here. Is that what you want to do now? Would you like film? to? Well, I should tell you a little bit about. Ooh, it. Why don't we talk? Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Oh, I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, I, uh, Harvey and I are running this high, uh, this uh, psychiatric institute for the very. Miss Corman, Harvey Corman, you're talking yes, about. Yes, Harvey. Oh, of course. Who else? Harvey? Harvey Corman. Oh, could have been a big rabbit. <laughs> Come to think of it, Harvey Corman's a big rabbit. Most people don't That's know That's what that. I'm saying. What's that the difference? It's Harvey. Harvey is a perfect name for Harvey. Yeah. You are such a good actress. Really, you handle everything so well. Thank I mean you, that. John. Yeah, whatever you do. You're do letting this. me call you John now. Before, when I was on, I, I called you John. You said, only my mother calls me John. I didn't say it that way. Yes, you did. Well, you said... Only my mother calls me John. <laughs> I wasn't going to do it that way. Can I say it that way? That's right. Well, me, mommy, mommy. <laughs> we'll do this and we'll return. <laughs> we were just convincing you about the... Well, you won't believe it. Your, our children. Oh, uh, yes. Your son is a musician. Yes. You said he's coming out with a... Well, George, Georgie England, is his, yeah. my 20-year-old son, who's just a... Uh, He's made an album with a new album that's out now called Fresh. It's, and the album's that's called Feeling Fresh, and Motown's uh, behind it, and they're going on the road, and they're getting their costumes all fit. Isn't that super? Thank uh, God, that's one out. I was, <laughs> I was asking Gabe, you know, about trying out material on, on his parents when you were young. Did he come and perform when he started in front of you and said, what do you think? Well, he also just made a film last year that uh, will be out as soon as they get a distributor. Yeah. It's an excellent film called Stony Island. And uh, he'd never acted in his life before, and he had to catch the plane in an hour and a half. And he, so I gave him a 30-minute acting lesson. And, and how uh, old is he? Well, he's, he's 20 now. That's incredible. It, it worked. I mean, he said it really helped him. <laughs> you gave him an acting lesson, and he went out? And... That's right. I did. What were you doing at 20? Were you acting at 20? At 20, I, I came from, a, from Chicago. I'd been going to Northwestern, and I was working in Chicago. And... Uh, uh, this man entered, uh, Bob Singer in Chicago, it was a, a friend who entered my picture in this contest. Anyway, I won the Miss WGN contest, Miss Chicago. I, I went to Atlantic City, uh, won a $1,000 scholarship, and to that... To Northwestern? No, wherever I wanted to go, or for er, whatever use. So, uh, I was 20, and my father gave me $60 to go to New York for three days, and, uh, 20, or eight years later, I went, I came to Hollywood, but I was, uh... I didn't stay three days, I stayed eight years. Did you know I asked Gabe the same question? Did you know when you were fairly young where you wanted to go, what direction you wanted, really out of your life? I mean, as, as, a, as an entertainer? I mean, it was the drive to, hey, I want to be in front of people I want to entertain. I think my mother uh, uh, felt that uh, she, she hoped that we would have an opportunity to um, not just marry right out of high school or college, <clears throat> but that we could uh, learn some things and go out and have experiences and then perhaps later uh, come back uh, even and uh, perhaps I think she had some idea that we would have some sort of place where we would might have two younger sisters, uh, Mary yeah. and Claiborne, and that uh, where the arts are, are uh, correlated. And so there's dancing and painting and singing and acting and everything all under one roof because they are related. I thought it's a good idea. We just never got back there yet. Yeah. But uh, probably in about 40 more years, well, we may, it's a good idea. You mentioned you got your 20 old one. But so many? this, you know, one foot led, one thing led to another thing. It, it uh, Or one foot led to another. Even too. that, <laughs> too. <laughs> but, you way. know, you do something and then you, the, I do feel that people create their own opportunities. I don't think they're lying out there on the ground and you, you go and find one and you pick it up. I think what you are and what you've done you make in your a certain life creates uh, opportunities that maybe weren't even there at all. Yeah. And also being at the right time at the right place, it sounds like a cliche, but it's true. But it's still, it's still what you create, because if you're not ready, the, you won't even recognize it as an opportunity. Yeah, it, but if you're was... not there, you wouldn't either. Well, that's right, so... <laughs> no, what I was saying... Really, saying, we should go into the philosophy business. What I'm saying is that an opportunity might be there, but if you're not there at the right place at that time, you couldn't take advantage of it. Well, I feel it's almost like, <laughs> since I'm from Des Moines and, and before the uh, motor... We, before the uh, uh, Detroit uh, bought up all the streetcars so they could sell more cars, 
Uh, I used to ride on streetcars in Des Moines, and so uh, that gave me this idea that uh, opportunities are sort of like streetcars, that they're coming along one after another. It doesn't, if you miss one, there'll be another if you're ready. And if you're there. You don't, ha you don't have to. <laughs> I, don't want to go I think he's stuck on the folks, tracks. But... Well, you know what I'm saying. I do know what you're saying. We're both from the Midwest. We think the same way, pretty much. Were you born in Iowa? Yes. That's right. I guess we did discuss that. I was supposed to put born where they say on the, anything you fill out says born. I was supposed to put Des Moines, Iowa. I put Methodist Hospital. In Des Moines, Iowa. I didn't say that. I just put Methodist Hospital. <laughs> Was it, it was in Des Moines, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It's still there. They're still having babies there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was one of them. I would have. <laughs> <laughs> this is a quiet night, John. Yes, you, you're, you're, you're rather quiet tonight. Well, no, it's I, you're quiet. You got quiet after the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> I guess I was emotionally uh, touched and moved there for a moment. I was hoping I could sing that, but then, yeah, I wasn't on yet, so. I was ready for the Lakers to play after that. <laughs> it threw me for a moment. We will do this. Are you going to stay with us for a while? What, what does this mean? I, if you're really important, you always say you have to leave early, and then you, you know, get off of the... I am always hanging around in case there's anything to do, huh? That's right. Okay, well, stick around for a while. And we'll, Marcel Marceau is here tonight. Well, I met him in Paris. All right, he'll be out. And London. We're back. Don't speak now, because...